Today is Thursday, March 14th. What to know about the Boeing planes taken out of service and how the airlines are responding. Plus a winter storm impacting millions, Facebook down, and the giraffe that has the world watching. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. All Boeing 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 planes are not allowed to fly until further notice. President Trump announced the order yesterday, and yes, that means some U.S. flights today will be delayed or even canceled. Both the U.S. and Canada join many other countries in grounding these particular planes. But now Reuters reports some lawmakers in Congress want to know why the FAA waited so long to make the call. Of course, we're talking about the reaction to two deadly plane crashes within about five months. Both were on a Boeing 737 MAX 8 plane, and both had no survivors. One was in Indonesia in October, and the other in Ethiopia just last weekend. Now the AP reports the FAA says investigators found more similarities between those two crashes and grounded planes because of that new evidence. The Wall Street Journal reports data shows both planes had quick roller coaster like altitude changes before the crash. Reports after the first one had indicated it may have had something to do with new flight control software. Still, it's all under investigation. For now, Boeing says it's supporting the FAA's decision out of a, quote, abundance of caution. Southwest Airlines says about 5 percent of its planes are affected. Market Watch reports Southwest, United and American say they'll waive any price differences for travelers who need to reschedule. We'll be chatting a bit more about this in today's Thing to Know Thursday interview after the news. It looks like President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, will now spend several years behind bars, and he's facing even more charges now. Let's start with the prison time. Manafort was sentenced yesterday to another three and a half years in prison for money laundering and obstruction of justice. That's on top of the nearly four years he got for other charges just last week. And on top of that, he's now been charged with more than a dozen additional felony crimes in the state of New York, including mortgage fraud. So could President Trump still pardon him? Trump has said that's not off the table. But here's the thing. The president can only pardon for federal charges, not state charges like the ones just filed. A few stories to know now from around the world. Reuters reports a school shooting in Brazil left several people dead, including five students. And a three-story building with a school inside collapsed in Nigeria. Several people died and dozens were trapped. And finally, an update about Brexit. Lawmakers in the U.K. will vote again today to decide if they should delay the Brexit deadline, which is in two weeks. Yesterday, they already voted no to a no-deal Brexit, meaning they don't want the U.K. to leave the EU without an exit plan in place. So more to come. Stay tuned. Well, back in the U.S., millions of people are dealing with some type of severe weather here in the second half of this week. NBC News reports a major winter storm moving through the central United States is bringing a range of bad conditions, from a blizzard in Colorado to heavy rain and flooding in other areas. In fact, the Denver Post reported nearly 1,000 flights out of the Denver airport were already canceled ahead of the storm. The AP reports it'll impact more than 25 states this week, from the northern Rocky Mountains to Texas and beyond. Heads up, Honda and Chrysler drivers, both car companies are recalling a bunch of vehicles. Honda is recalling more than a million cars for the second time because of dangerous airbags. Yes, the same Takata airbags you may have heard about before. And Fiat Chrysler will recall more than 800,000 vehicles. The Verge reports it's because they don't meet U.S. emissions standards. You can find all the details about the vehicles affected in today's show notes. Also, HP is expanding a recall of laptop batteries because of fire concerns. It actually started the recall back in January, but in Gadget reports, we're just hearing about this now because the government agency that deals with recalls didn't post it during the government shutdown. Laptops sold between April 2015 and December of last year could be affected. HP will replace your laptop battery for free. All right, much more news ahead, but a quick break for today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a private, affordable, and convenient option to connect with a professional counselor. If there's anything interfering with your happiness or stopping you from being your best self, then why not give BetterHelp a try? You can talk to someone when and how you want, on your own time, at your own pace, and you choose how you talk, text, chat, phone, or video. Of course, everything you share is confidential and secure. There are counselors for everything you may need, including anxiety, family conflicts, grief, or just too much stress. 
All you do to get started is fill out a simple questionnaire to help them assess your needs. And if you've ever thought of giving it a try, now is the time because the Newsworthy listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code NEWSWORTHY. Go to betterhelp.com slash newsworthy and see what BetterHelp can do for you. That's betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Now back to the news. Verizon's 5G network is coming to two cities as soon as next month. The Verge reports the new faster mobile network will launch in Chicago and Minneapolis on April 11th. But it will cost you. Fox Business says Verizon will charge customers an extra 10 bucks per month for the faster service. You'll also have to get a new phone that works with it. T-Mobile has already promised not to raise prices for customers on its 5G network, which is expected to launch later this year. Spotify claims Apple isn't playing fair, so it filed an antitrust complaint in Europe this week. Wired reports Spotify says Apple is abusing its control of the App Store to kill the competition. At this point, Apple has not responded. Right now, the European Commission says it got the complaint and is looking into it. There's apparently a new criminal investigation into Facebook, and the New York Times reports a grand jury just subpoenaed at least two large smartphone makers for related documents. It's about data deals Facebook made with other companies, essentially a deal to hand over users' personal info, sometimes without their permission. There aren't a lot of details about the investigation just yet, but Facebook says it's cooperating. Well, if you've been having issues with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, you're not alone. They were at least partially down yesterday. In fact, CNN says, at least for Facebook, it's believed to be the longest interruption to service since the social network started. As of early this morning, at least Facebook is still having some problems. But Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, tweeted last night that it's back. Speaking of Twitter, the hashtags Facebook down and Instagram down were trending much of the day. April, the giraffe is about to give birth again, and the world is watching live on YouTube. Just like a few years ago, the AP says this could be a repeat of 2017 when a live stream of the giraffe had more than 200 million views. She's a giraffe at the Animal Adventure Park in Harpersville, New York, so stay tuned. And that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Thing to Know Thursday, where a different expert explains a different thing to know only on Thursdays after the news. This week, I wanted to get a little more insight into the Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes that have been taken out of service around the world. Before we get into it, I first want to say a lot of different experts do have different opinions about how this situation should have been handled. Some have said the planes should have been grounded from the start. And as mentioned earlier on the show, Congress is now questioning the FAA and why the U.S. took so long to make the call. But the perspective you're about to hear is from someone who has been part of the FAA, working in training, investigations, and emergency response. He's now the director of the USC Aviation Safety and Security Program. So here's my conversation with Thomas Anthony. Hi, Thomas. Thanks so much for coming on the Newsworthy. Glad to do it. Glad to be here. So let's start with why the U.S., the FAA, was pretty much the last country, the last agency to ground these Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes. And now, in your opinion, is it the right move that they are taken out of service? Well, the real underlying question is, is this a data-based decision? Uh, We know that since the year 2010, all international airlines have been required to to capture and document and analyze the flight data that is downloaded from uh, from the aircraft. So we don't have to wait for a, for a crash to download the flight data recorder. So essentially you're saying, were there other situations where something went wrong with those planes, but they didn't crash? Absolutely. What does the flight data say about these aircraft uh, since the day they were uh, they were put into service by the airlines. Would you, from what you know today, get on a 737 MAX airplane? Yes, I would get on a 737 MAX. How many are there in the U.S., as far as you know, and, and what's the potential impact to travelers? Well, the impact is very, very significant. It will go into the millions, probably billions of dollars. There are uh, over 350 of these 800 series and 900 series. But what's important to remember is that they are not easily replaceable by other models of the 737 because they are used on 
uh, extra long legs like flying from Seattle to Honolulu or from Los Angeles to Honolulu or from uh, Dallas to Columbia. And so they are the only 737 models that uh, are sort of designed for this type of uh, long range activity. Boeing has said that model is the fastest selling plane in the company's history. And there's a reason for that. It has been a reliable uh, workhorse of the industry. But every time you change significantly an aircraft, even though you uh, you call it continue to call it a 737, was there a change management process that was put into place that accounted for all the possible hazards that might result for uh, result from those changes. And there were significant changes between the previous 737s and uh, this 800 and 900 series. What do you think the timeline will be to actually know the causes of both of the crashes within the last six months and potentially seeing these aircraft go back in the air? The timeline is relatively short because we have the flight data recorders, I would say within the week, probably within a few days. And I'll be posting links in today's show notes if you want to read more about this topic and hear a few different perspectives on this. As always, that's also where you can find more about all the stories we mentioned. Just go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. Thank you again for listening. And remember, The Newsworthy is here for you by four in the morning every weekday. So we'll chat again tomorrow. Have a great day.